All right, hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is where we're at on the Super Life Coup project. In this video, we are going to do the initial suspension alignment for the body placement, uh, which means we're going to set the ride height, also set uh, zero toe in and zero camber so we can see how the uh, wheels line up in the body and get the body centered. Also, we are going to install the bell cranks, the rear suspension bell cranks, which place the rear shock absorbers in an uh, in inboard orientation. Pretty cool, pretty cool design, you know, really, really comes out of uh, auto racing. So anyway, stay tuned and thanks for watching. Okay, so I had a chance to do some quick math to figure out where I need to place the front suspension. And, you know, this is a little little drawing I, I made up. But basically, I went out to tiresize.com and found out the tires I'm going to order are 25.7 inches in diameter. And I want to have a front ride height of... 4.25 inches. Uh, it's recommended to have a four inch ride height, uh, but I want to add a little little extra clearance there because uh, this car is very, very low. And basically, uh, you know, the, the midpoint of the wheel bearing or the wheel is uh, you're subtracting the radius of the tire from the ride height and that tells you you know how far uh, from the bottom of the chassis the center of the wheel needs to be which is 8.6 inches now in our case our car is up on a lift and it's it's uh the bottom of the chassis is 11 inches off the ground so i take 8.6 inches which is the difference between uh the body the bottom of the chassis and the center of the wheel and I add it to the the, the current uh, distance where the where the car is off the floor and I get 19.6 inches so I'm going to find the center point on the upright and adjust the suspension at zero camber and zero toe so it's 19.6 inches off the ground okay so this is all in theory uh, you know, hopefully th these measurements are accurate and uh, and only have to do it once. Okay, well, we made a little progress here. Uh, basically, what I did was I had to locate the center of where the wheel is going to go. So I, I ran some string between the holes where the wheel bearings mount and the area where the strings cross the X. That's really where the center of the wheel is. And I raised up the suspension a bit to get it 19 and a half inches off the ground. So that's probably like 4.1, you know, 4.1, 4.15 inches of front ride height for our purposes. That's fine. Uh, also, I, I backed out that top rod end uh, three full turns. And that gave me exactly... Uh, you know, a 90 degree angle or zero, zero camber on that front upright. Uh, also, I, if I turn that in three full turns, it'll set uh, the, the front upright to uh, minus 0.8 degrees camber, which is what the factory recommendation is. I'm sure things will need to be adjusted once uh, the car's on the tire, you know, the tires are on the car and the car is on the ground, but for our purposes now, I think this is fine. Uh, the next step is to adjust toe into zero, so that's what we'll tackle next. All right, well, we're moving on to setting the toe into zero, and a couple things. So the way I'm going to do this is I have a very long level, which I know is dead straight, and I clamp that onto the upright. And then what I need to do is just find a surface that's parallel to the upright. So, uh, you know, that front, that front uh, frame on the chassis uh, to me is parallel to what we, what we want to set the, set the uprights to. And actually, if, you, if I zoom in here, you can see, hmm, let's see, here we go. 
you can see that there's a slight toe in. So originally I thought I was going to have to trim the steering rack, but maybe that's not the case. Uh, so I'm going to use a micrometer and just get that as close to zero as possible. And for our purposes of uh, setting up the body, uh, it should do. Okay, well, it, it's sort of hard to see uh, just because this uh, level actually has to get within within like a millimeter or two of that, of that uh, piece of the frame. But anyway, I was able to get it to zero toe in. And I really had to just sort of back off that tie rod rod end a couple turns. So that's good. So I'm sort of happy I don't have to trim, trim the steering rack. So uh, I sort of jumped to a conclusion there. Uh, but anyway, the next thing we're going to do is I'm not going to mount the shocks in the car, but I'm going to fab up these rods that will hold the wheels exactly where they are now or hold the uprights exactly where they are now so that when I mount the wheels on the car and have the car on the lift, uh, the wheels don't droop. And that way I could raise the car up and I could... I could work on aligning the body and all the other things I need to do. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, the next step. I'll segue over to the work table and you'll see the parts that we're going to use to assemble those. Okay, well, these are the parts for our next step. I got this idea from another gentleman. Uh, he built a beautiful uh, Ultima GTR and his channel is called Drive Driver Driven. His name is Humble, and he, he built a, a beautiful car. He, I think the video series is called Project Blunicorn. Anyway, he had some fabbed up metal plates that he bolted in uh, to do the initial alignment uh, while the car was in the air. And I want to do the, the same thing, uh, but I want to make these bars adjustable. So I bought some uh, grade 8 half-inch threaded uh, threaded rods from McMaster car, some half-inch rod ends, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to put this, you know, where this where the shocks would normally go. I've got to uh, trim this up a little bit, but anyway, that that'll be the next step. So I'm going to trim these bars up, and then we'll we'll mount them to the front suspension, and then we'll move on to the uh, the rear suspension. Here we go. Let's see, we've got the anti-droop rods, or whatever we're going to call them, installed. Uh, we've got the, the left and the right front. Uh, anyway, I think we're, we're in really good shape. We're at zero toe. We're at 19 and a half inches off the ground, the center of the upright. And we're at literally zero camber by putting, you know, putting a digital level on the face on the face of uh, the upright. You know, it's nice that they're so square, so you could just use a level. You don't need any other fancy instruments. But anyway, they look good. All right, now we're gonna move on to the, uh, the bell cranks on the rear. All right, well, before we move on to the bell cranks, I worked up the same kind of sheet for the rear ride height. Uh, the rear ride height, I'm going to set at like 5 inches or 5.1 inches. And basically the math is very similar. Uh, the tire's a little taller and the suspension geometry is a bit different, but uh, nothing really to, to specifically comment about. So let's uh, sort of move over to the rear, the rear suspension here. And I still use that long the long level and then measured it against the frame rail uh, to set zero toe. I used the micrometer, that works out pretty well. And now we're ready to uh, get started on the bell cranks. All right, so I finally had a chance to install the bell cranks on the rear suspension. And you know, it's a pretty cool setup. You'll notice here we've got this uh, push rod down to the lower control arm. And when the suspension compresses, it basically rotates the bell crank. And then in this area, we'll actually have the coilover shock absorber. But for now, what we'll do is I've got to shorten this up, but we'll put another one of these adjusting uh, anti-droop rods in the uh, 
in the rear suspension and then the ride height will be set so we can mount the tires on the car. So the final segue will be uh, showing all those anti-droop rods in place. All right, well, this is the last segment of the video. As you can see, we have the anti-droop rods installed on the rear suspension. And all in all, I think it came out great. So I'm able to hang the suspension or the rear suspension at 18.75 inches off the ground, the front suspension at 19 and a half inches off the ground. And the reason for the difference is the size, you know, you have to compensate for the size of the tires. The rear tires are taller. And also the, the height difference between the front and the rear of the chassis versus the ground is also slightly different. Uh, the uh, chassis angles down in the back towards the floor. So anyway, uh, we're in good shape. In the next video, we'll cover installing the wheel bearings and also put the wheels on the car. And hopefully uh, I'll get a hand from somebody and I can get the body mounted on the car and we can see how this initial alignment looks. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care.